So what would be your advice to the girl that's like, I'm anxious and overthinking everything. I mean, this girl literally just said that. The truth of the matter is actually now more than ever, men don't even want to think about getting married until they're in their mid thirties or pushing 40. And I, I love that you even mentioned a little bit of like the scarcity mindset, because I think the question that I'm getting a lot from women right now is they're like, I'm almost 30. I'm running out of time. I can't find anybody. I'm single. I'm lonely. What do I do? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Happy and Healthy. I am your host, Janine Amapola. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. It's an honor to be this host. Anyway, uh, welcome back to the podcast. Happy Tuesday. I post these every single Tuesday, and I am so pumped for today's episode. But before we get into it, we're going to do some updates. So hello. It is June. I'm filming this June 8th. And um, it's so crazy. Time has flown. We are already halfway through the year. Holy poop. But anyway, I'm really excited for the summer. I really genuinely believe that summer 23 is going to be like the summer 16. Like, I don't know what was in the year summer 16, but it was a great summer. And I feel like it's coming back. But um, I just got back from the Dominican Republic late last night. My flight kept getting delayed. Literally mid in the air, they tell us, Hi guys, um, they probably didn't say it like that, but they're like, hi guys, I'm actually just letting you guys know after our flight was already delayed an hour, we're gonna actually have to fly another 45 minutes extra because there's some rain up ahead that we need to avoid. So I didn't get back so freaking late. And um, it was so sweet. Caleb picked me up, my sweet little man. He wasn't with me on, I, little man, don't don't take that wrong. My sweet man picked me up. It was so great. And um, I was exhausted though, but the trip was absolutely amazing. If you guys wanna see what I was doing there, check it out. I went with Compassion International, which was honestly, the coolest experience it's basically how you like sponsor a child you supply all their needs um for 42 dollars a month i got to meet my sponsor child abigail from the dominican republic it was so life-changing so rewarding and genuinely it's so cool to see the difference you are making in a child's life like with your money with your time writing them letters pouring into them praying for them like we got to hear so many testimonies of people that graduated out of the compassion program and how their life was just absolutely changed by compassion i'm not even being paid to say this i just genuinely believe in what they're doing definitely check out compassion i think there's a link in my bio if you do want to sponsor a child but that was just so rewarding and in a great trip i went with my sister it was a good time then we went to the beach afterwards and now i'm back for just a little bit and i'm really excited but Anyway, for today's episode, I am so stoked because we're going to be talking about dating. Is there sound effects for this? Let's see. I know. Dating is scary. That was the perfect sound effect. Um, so my friend Rachel Cheryl, I've brought her on before. Maybe you've heard of her. She's one of my good friends. When I lived in California, we were really good friends. And she is the true feminine on Instagram. But we talked about dating and we answered y'all's questions, y'all's situations, things that you guys are going through. We answered them together. Rachel is just a bundle of freaking wisdom and also joy. She's so fun. And uh, we just got to go through the common things that you guys are struggling with going through and just chat about them from a godly perspective. But also she's like a dating coach. She talks about feminine energy, which I don't don't hear. It's all woo woo and weird. I promise you it works. And just listen to the episode. But it's also God designed, I feel like. And it's also changed my life. So I really think this episode is going to be a blessing to you. If you are dating someone, you're looking to date, you're single, whatever the case may be, maybe you're dating someone right now and you're like, I'm struggling. This episode will hopefully help you out. So let's just get right into it. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Rachel Cheryl Green, welcome back to the podcast. <laughs> Hey, girl. I'm so excited to have you on. It has been a minute. I think I the last time I had you on was over a year ago, right? That Yeah, it's been a minute for sure, for sure. Well, welcome back to the podcast. You are the true feminine on Instagram. You are helping thousands of women every day with their dating problems, their life, to step into their femininity, which, I mean, okay, so backstory for people that don't know, we knew each other back in California when I lived out there. You literally changed my life 
dating wise. Like I oh. tell my boyfriend Caleb all the time. I'm like, Caleb, if it were not for Rachel, I don't think I would be this woman today, which is why oh. I love having you on the podcast. You are an inspiration. Your tips genuinely work. So thank you for coming on. And maybe before we dive into the juicy questions and topics, you can give a proper introduction of who you are and what you like to do. Oh my gosh. Who am I? What do I like to do? Well, Rachel Cheryl Green. Yes, I love that you said that because uh, I j- everyone's now nicknaming me RSG. Oh, because uh, you know it's hard. Be- it's hard. The transition of like your maiden name to married name is difficult. But anyways, um, yes, I live in Southern California, San Diego. So shout out to my San Diegans. And um, I. Gosh, what do I like to do? I don't know, Janine. I like to do everything: travel, <laughs> surf hang out with my friends, hang out with my husband. Um, Honestly, I love doing what I do. I love helping women. I think that is, um, it's very life-changing to get to see women have big aha moments or those moments that really click. And um, watching girls leave this very masculine-driven society and this way of being, this state of being, and shifting into that softer, flowy feminine state. And, you know, I teach, I have a big program that I do. And I just had a girl the other day in the program say, oh my gosh, it's all working. It's all clicking. And it feels Mm -hmm. free. Like I feel free inside. And so just like teaching women to return home to who they really are and really who God designed us to be as, you know, the feminine side of this whole, God's whole beautiful creation. So Mm. anyways, that's me. I love it. I, I really do feel like you are a woman that is teaching women to just embrace femininity, which it sounds weird because I feel like a lot of what you're teaching is just what the Bible already like laid out. Like it was God's design and we've mm-hmm. shifted away towards a more feministic culture. And I think for a while, everyone was like really empowered. And like, I thought that was kind of cool too. I was like, yeah, I'm a girl boss. I'm strong. I don't need no man, blah, blah, blah. And then I realized like, oh, my relationships aren't working or men are leaving or men are repelled by me. And so mm-hmm. I remember being like, something is obviously not working. And I remember you gave me all this advice of all the things that I was doing wrong. And I was like, what? Like, literally had no idea I was doing these things wrong. And so, um, I'm just super excited to have you on to talk about this. And so maybe before we get into the topics, because what we did was I reached out to a ton of my followers and they basically submitted things that they're struggling with in dating. So we're going to try to cover those as much as possible with the time that we have. We are on a little bit of a time crunch because Rachel and I, we could talk for three hours. Like we literally could. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's bad. Okay. Good. Yeah. But we, we can also do another series or bring you back on if we just feel like there's more topics to cover, but overall, can you give a quick, a, a quick, that's not a word, um, <laughs> a quick brief of femininity versus masculine energy. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, I think this is the foundational thing. Just so when you hear myself or even Janine refer to it, um, Really, uh, you know, I talk a lot about this. Well, it's become uh, much more popular, but this whole concept of masculine and feminine energy, and I break that down super practically. You know, when you think of energy, um, it's really just another part of science, essentially. Like when we think of gravity, when we think of oxygen, like we all understand that. I'm not going to walk on the top of a roof and jump off um, because I might like die. And it's not safe, but I don't see gravity, but I feel it. I know it's there. I don't see oxygen yet. I I know I need it and it's happening, right? And so energy is the same thing. And all day long, we are having energetic exchanges with humans and um, how we show up there's always a different energy that we are showing up in. And one of these basic examples I use is, you know, the football stadium. If you walk in a football stadium, you're like, wow, it was electrifying in there. It was high energy. You would probably describe that. If you were to go into a library, it would be kind of this low energy state. So it's really just a state of being. And um, so we have the masculine and the feminine. The masculine side, and I really almost refer to it as the masculine side of nature. Sometimes I say that. Um, I kind of use different words, but um, 
uh, the masculine side is the masculine energy is this go, go, do, do, make things happen, get things done, solve problems, fix things. Um, it's using your head. It's all strategy. It's headspace. It is analyzing. It's analytical and, um, and agenda. So, um, if you think of, and, and here's another one that's interesting. It's the giving side. It's the giver. And often I, the way I explain this is that giving is action oriented and action oriented is more in that masculine column. And if you were to look at another column that was feminine, that would be the more, the receiver and um, it's soft, it's receptive, it slows down, it's not pushy or in a rush. It's kind of this leaned back state of being. And it is, uh, it's, uh, there's so many things to it. Oh, heart space and body. So that's what I like to think, like masculines in the head, feminines in the body. So that's like brief, brief, but yeah, <laughs> well, I'll just stop there because there's a lot to the two, but I think you get the the difference of the two. If you think of masculine's giving because he's taking action yeah. and he's solving the problems and the feminine is just receiving that you're learning this art of receiving. But the issue is that we live, we've all been conditioned our whole life to do, do, go, go, compete, use your head, use your mind. And now we just meet our man with the same kind of uh, state of being. So there's not really like this nice polarization that brings two complementing uh, parts together. Mm. So, yeah. And if any, anybody wants to know like more about it, you've talked about this in depth on the Heart of Dating podcast. You did like a whole series with her as well as your own podcast. So we don't have to explain everything. If anyone's like, okay, explain more, check out her Instagram, Heart of Dating. Like you have so many awesome resources to elaborate more on this. But the reason why I wanted to bring you on is because you, I feel like you're, you're a dating coach. Like you're kind of an expert in this area. And I have seen your advice to have worked like foolproof has worked. And so there's a couple girls that are struggling with some things and I know you get the DMS as well. And so I'd love your advice. We can kind of just have an open conversation on these, um, your advice on some of the things that people are struggling with in dating. So the common thread that I've kind of seen on my Instagram from people is a lot of them just say they don't know how to like communicate. They're overthinking. They feel anxious. They have this anxious attachment. seems like they're afraid he's going to leave or they're like, oh my gosh, am I doing too much? Does he like me? So what would be your advice to the girl that's like, I'm anxious and overthinking everything. I mean, this girl literally just said that. <laughs> that's, was that her question? That's what she said. Yeah. I get really anxious and overthink capitalize, capitalize everything. I just want to know for sure if he's the right guy. So there's so much to that, but just, just when I hear instantly, I just want to know for sure if he's the right guy already, you are attaching to an outcome. So there's already in your energetic state of being, <laughs> it's, I need to get to the end. I need to know the end. I need to get there. And so when we're constantly trying to sort out the end state and the end game, we're we're going to be frazzled on the inside. There is no ability to relax. So one thing I would love to encourage this person and everyone who who struggles with overthinking is ask yourself what first of all, what you got to ask yourself a series of questions and one of them is what am I, one, hoping it will happen? So get clear on what is it that you're hoping will happen? Usually that's, I'm hoping that we end up together and it's happily ever after and he commits and everything goes great and we get married. Okay, that's great. Now, what are you hope, What are you afraid of happening? And then ask yourself, is there evidence of that happening right now? So coming back to the now moment, and looking at facts, a lot of times I tell girls to, um, instead of saying what if, you know, get out of the what ifs and actually just say what is actually happening now. Because the what if is future, it's not actually present. And I want to say that when you are overthinking everything, you're sitting there using your head and you're strategizing. Well, when you're strategizing, it's because you're trying to get something or make something happen. And the issue with that is that that's not an empowering place for you to be. That That is not actually, that's not your design, your makeup. Your makeup is let me relax because when you do that, I actually tell girls you're energetically pursuing this man mm. or you're energetically chasing him when you do that. 
and versus saying, I, I always try to ask girls, well, what, if, what is he thinking? Do you want him to be the one who's worrying about the end result or concerned about that? Then you need to let that go. Then you need to shift out of that and say, okay, if it's not this, man, it's something better. If it's not this, it's something better. And keeping more of an abundance mindset, I mean, there's so much to this and but I think when we're when we are worried that there's not enough of something or that we're going to run out of a resource, we go, we grab, we grab hold. And that's just with life in general. Mm. We cling if we feel like we're going to lose something or we're going to run out. Something's going to run out. And the truth is, is that there is absolutely zero, no shortage whatsoever of good hearted, commitment ready, godly men in the world. And I know it may feel like that, mm -hmm. but that you're, you're coming in agreement with that belief system that there's not enough or there's not going to be. So I would detach from that. Like I always tell girls, you're kind of committed to an old narrative. So you need to recommit to a new narrative, which is, okay, how about this? Wouldn't it be fun? Wouldn't it be fun if just there were just so many godly men who just showed up in my life? Just mm. speaking that out is helping to shift out of this, you know, worry. And if it doesn't work with that guy, do you really want to be in a relationship where you're the one grappling and trying to sort everything out and make things happen? You will be surprised that if you release that, you let go and you say, you know what, I'm going to actually observe and see what this man decides to do all on his own. When you do that, you actually, one, get to see what's really happening. You get to see the truth about a man, if they're really into it or not, versus, okay, how do I do this? How do I make this? How do I, is, is this enough? Am I being enough? Am I doing this? You know, when you're doing that, you're... Um, you're not allowing, you're not giving space. You're not giving this like space for him to, to reveal who he is mm. because you're trying to take hold. So I, I mean, Janine, there's so, I know we're like crunched on time. So we're like rapid firing here, but there's so much to that to unpack. And a lot of it is the deep, a lot of it is some deep work of yeah. just going back and 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 really uh, doing some inner dialogue. I actually am going to do a masterclass soon on inner self talk. Mm. Like, what is the dialogue inside of your inside of your own heart and mind? Because we let we let a lot of interesting old voices take over, and 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 kind of take the driver's seat in our in our dating life when we can, we actually have the ability to sort of talk ourselves out of that and move forward. And, um, but you know, ultimately just remind yourself for like a quick, the sum up the quick tip is remind yourself that he is not your only option. Yeah, I know it feels like he is, but he is not. And that you are filled with options. When you get anxious, I would take a deep breath and just go, ah, there are so many options available for me. Mm. There are so many men. If this doesn't work out, I'm so, it's actually exciting how many good men there are. And I'm going to observe, I'm going to take the time to see if this is the, if this is a good person. Because the, the reality too, I want to add is that so many girls want the end answer. We want to know, is this the right person? You are not going to know that right off the bat, most likely, okay? Maybe some people once in a blue moon might, but everything takes time. You have to collect your data, as I say. You have to collect the information that you need, and sometimes that takes a couple months mm. to observe, to see. So don't be afraid or see those two months of getting to know someone as a waste of time. I would view those two months of getting to know someone as as a wise investment, you're, it's just, you're investing your time in getting to this result of marriage. And sometimes that is taking two months and maybe that's not the right guy, but Hey, that was your, you're investing into your future, your future self that desires to be a wife one day, really. Mm, so I'm going to stop. Good advice. I know we have more questions, but no, that's honestly such good advice. And I, I love that you even mentioned a little bit of like the scarcity mindset, because I think the question that I'm getting a lot from women right now is they're like, I'm almost 30. I'm running out of time. I can't find anybody. I'm single. I'm lonely. What do I do? And so I think even 
going back to that same mindset of like, you're the one limiting yourself with your own scarcity mindset of trying to create because you feel like you're running out of time. But I also would love to get your thoughts on like to the woman that is like, I'm almost 30. And I, I mean, to me, I'm like, girl, you got so much time. Like, I know for you, you didn't get married till what, like 32, right? I was 33. 33, yeah. So so maybe can you speak to the girl that feels like, oh, I'm getting old or my eggs are rotting or there's no, like you just said, there's no good men left, which I don't believe. But just the girl that feels like, oh man, I'm getting old. What do I do? Did you know that hair thinning will happen to approximately one in two women? If you're among them, know that you're not alone. Nutrafol is here to help deliver results. So someone like myself who also struggles with hair thinning, I'm really excited to be partnering up with Nutrafol about this. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand and is physician formulated with 100% drug-free ingredients. Nutrafol's newest all-vegan formula is for women ages 18 plus with plant-based lifestyles who are experiencing signs of hair thinning. With consistent daily use, Nutrafol Women's Vegan Hair Growth Supplement promotes visibly less hair shedding, visibly thicker hair volume, and hair that grows faster, longer, and stronger. Also, to top it off, in a clinical study, 100% of the women reported improved hair strength after three months and more scalp coverage after six months. That's so amazing. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair for a limited time. Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code HEALTHY. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com promo code HEALTHY. That's Nutrafol.com promo code HEALTHY. Mm, Oh my gosh, I'm getting old. That is such a little trap, okay? First of all, 30 is not actually as old as you think it is, or or, uh, you're actually still in your prime, literally. So Mm. like, don't worry about that. You still look beautiful. You're still, you're still healthy too. Um, You know, first of all, I like to just get practical real quick. You know, uh, this whole, like I'm running out of time and this and that, uh, What's remarkable is that we actually have the ability to have a child until you're 45, truly, okay? So there's that. I just want to put that out there. So if you're worried at 30 or you're feeling like you're getting old at 25 or whatever it is, you're definitely not because I know girls feel old at 25. (laughs) It's kind of funny. I did. I remember feeling old at 25, but... Um, And 30 is like the best time of your life. I actually have been telling some of my girls this, Janine. I'm like, let me actually tell you the advantage Mm. that some of you guys have if you're like mid 30s or pushing 40 or whatever. The truth of the matter is actually now more than ever, men don't even want to think about getting married until they're in their mid 30s or pushing 40. Oh my gosh. At least in California. (laughs) And I know I'm in California but I'll tell you what, it is shocking. Like mm. that is something, that's a big pattern out here, you know? And I'm like, wow. I'm like, so, you know, guys, when they're 30, aren't even ready. They're not there yet. And no. so this is this is another issue people are coming up against is they are going on these dating apps or they're dating guys and, you know, the guy is interested in them. They think they're cute and, you know, they're vibing a little bit. But the guy is, you know, he's like, uh, actually, I don't know if I'm ready, you know, Mm. out of nowhere, someone will come and say that. And it's interesting. The truth is they're actually kind of not, you know, and they, they have to come to that sober realization, but they don't come to it right away. They come to it later. Um, and so what ends up happening a lot is that men aren't even ready. Not all of the time, because I married someone younger, Janine's with someone younger, you know, Kate's with someone younger. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes, sometimes the younger guys are much more ready if you're older. That's another thing I want to add. You could be 30 and your husband could be 25. Yep. You know, you don't even know. And they, and it doesn't matter about this person's age. It just matters about their emotional maturity level, their emotional intelligence level. And, um, and also, you know, just where they are at in life. And so I do want to encourage you, if you're feeling like you're getting older, 
you're not. And one thing that you could just say to yourself is, you know what? I'm at the perfect age right now. I love this age. I love that there's so many good men out there who love women my age. In fact, I'm collecting new evidence. I always tell people, you need to collect some evidence. Yeah. You need to put some <laughs> evidence files together, you know, that there's so many women who are older. And in fact, I'm going to share this, okay? Because one of my friends, she, uh, I think she was 30 nine when she met her husband who was like 32. I don't know. They're nine years apart. I can't do math off wow. the top of my head, but <laughs> you guys get what I'm saying. They were, they're nine years apart. Her husband, I was friends with, and he literally said this. He goes, oh, girls my age, I wasn't even interested in. Like he thought girls who were around 30 years old were mm. immature. Like he I've had heard no this. interest yeah. in them. And he was a good looking, great catch. Okay. He wanted, he was way more intrigued and interested in the woman who was nine years older than him and had zero interest in someone around his age. So please let that sink in. That happens more than you realize. So as you feel like you're getting older, don't, do not be mistaken that there are so many guys who one, love that you're a little older than yeah. them, by the way. They're actually totally into that. They, there's something about your womanliness, your maturity, um, that, that sparks a challenge in them that sparks this, like this drive or something in them. Um, I mean, there's a ton of reasons why you should not worry. And then also think about technology, the technology that is out there now to keep our bodies healthier, to have babies. I had a woman tell me before I got on this call, she said, Oh, do you guys have kids? I said, well, we're working on it. And then she goes, oh, well, no rush. Don't be rushed. Trust me, because the second you have a kid, like, your yeah. whole world changes. And that just was kind of comforting to me in that right. moment. I was like, you know what? She's right. Like, actually, and I'm 35, you know? So um, there's no rush. And that's that's a whole another part of, of leaning in and surrendering to the feminine essence is like, I'm not in a rush, mm. which actually is a beautiful uh not element, but, um, characteristic of God, you know, yeah. is, uh, that God is not in a rush, you know, and we're made in the image of God. So we also can embrace that part of God that is like, I'm not in a rush. That's so good. You know, everything's working out for me. Even when it's not working out for me, it's still working out for me because that was working for me mm. in my favor. So that's good. I know we have so much to say. So no, I um, love it. I, I'm I think that's here too, girl. So yeah. <laughs> I think it's so great because I really do feel like men will pick up on a desperate energy if you are trying to lock them down, secure it, rush it. Why are you asking me out? Why are you taking me on a date? Why are you making this official? And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Like so, I think it's almost. More, and I can't blanket statement this, but I, I do feel like it's more attractive to a man when you're like, I'm chilling, and he's like wait, why don't you want to date me? Every other yeah. girl is begging to be up in my DMs and date me. And you're like, I'm chilling. I know yeah, myself. I know you're not the only good option out there, you know? And it's mm -hmm. not that you're trying to play a purposeful game, but mm -hmm. I think men are attracted to confidence and security and you letting him pursue you and let things pan out as they normally would. And I love that you would say, like, stop trying to manipulate and force and create things to happen that wouldn't have happened naturally because you're like, I need a picture perfect story timeline. It's like, no, like you are the only one creating that for yourself. And who cares? Like if it doesn't look like your neighbors or your best friends or whatever. And so, yeah. Any thoughts on that? <laughs> oh, 100. I mean, the, the desperate energy, I mean, you girls got to cut that out like today, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, because it is so repelling. And in fact, even when you are not in a romantic dynamic, desperate, that desperate energy that you're, you're showing up with actually repels most people, which is interesting. Right. So, um, I, you know, the, the desperate thing, like I, and men can feel that. That's what I love about the energy exchange between humans. Things are felt that are not seen. And so that is felt so much. And so you want to ground in. This is not my only option. I'm actually not running out of time. You know, my dad, every time I ask my dad how old he is, he'll say something like, I can't remember how old he is right now, but something like, I'm 65 young. He still says mm. young. He will not even use the word old. My dad looks really young, like, and he's very energetic. 
And I just love that. I'm like, yeah, speak that over yourself. (laughs) Dirty young. Hello. How you think and how you feel about yourself will often be how others think of you. Yeah. And it's so this is kind of a weird conundrum, but it's real. Okay. So if I do not think of myself as a high value person and I think that I'm desperate and I feel like I'm running out of time and all these things and I don't have enough and I don't have this and I don't have that um, and lack, 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 lack. Um, others will also, it's like a mirror, they'll, they'll see that they feel that from you. And so then guess what? They believe what you believe about yourself. Yeah. So be careful of that. So a man is going to believe about you, what you believe about yourself. So this is where our inner belief system really matters. And, and the cool thing is, is if you've been conditioned to believe really negative things about yourself for a long time. There's really amazing good news. One, the power of God who can change your life and your whole mind and heal your heart. But also, two, our whole incredible, you know, body system that God's designed. Scientists have learned that we can actually create new neural pathways inside of our brains. Mm. So we get to evolve and create a new story and a new narrative um, and a new belief inside of ourselves. And so, um, which is a whole, like, class in and of itself, but you know, don't, but I say that to encourage you listening that there is no, um, you're not stuck. You're not stuck where you're at in this icky belief about yourself, um, system, whatever that condition is, there is hope and you can easily, we all can, and I'm living proof of that. And I'm sure Janine is too, where I was definitely very insecure. I was definitely shaky and wobbly and nervous with, with every guy. I was so scared of everything. And um, I I learned, I learned to have this inner knowing, this inner beingness rather than do, do, do to get, get, get this inner like, wow, like I actually am a very valuable person. I am a high value woman. And therefore, I actually don't, I don't have to do anything. I actually mm. don't have to do much, you know? Yeah. <laughs> It is. It's like that quote, though, that's like um, it's kind of cliche, but it's so true. It's like we accept the love that we think we deserve. And it Mm -hmm. is exactly it's a reflection of the way you see yourself is what you're going to accept. So it's like if you're dating a man that mistreats you or abuses you or ghosts you or leaves you unread or, you know, comes in and out of your life whenever you want. It's like you're not valuing yourself enough. You're not honoring Mm -hmm. yourself enough. You're not letting um, you're not standing up for yourself. You're letting this man walk o- all over you. And it's like, because you don't see yourself as worthy and valuable. And so you can speak more to that, but I do think that is exactly true. I really do. Mm, that's so good. So, okay. That's a huge thing that I've been on this year alone is, uh, teaching my girls in my, uh, true Femme Academy, you know, to just start to say, I actually sort of make them say this, say I'm worthy just because, and I make them stop there because, <laughs> um, because we often, uh, we attach our worthiness to so many things. Oh, well, I'm worthy because he likes me. I'm worthy because he thinks I'm cute. I'm worthy or I'm valuable because of this, or mm-hmm. I have value because of because I got straight A's. I have value because I got this degree. I have value because I work really hard and I'm known for that, right? Yeah. And so I have value. I have worth because of X, Y, Z. Now, as Christians, because I know a lot of your community and mine as Christian, you know, we understand like God sees me as worthy. I am worthy because God sees me worthy, 100%. And I totally believe that. Thank you, Lord. But I do want to say that there is a lot of just earthly, deeply embedded beliefs that I'm worthy if I do something, if I am, if I become. Right. And I even had a girl say, uh, I made her reframe something. And she said, well, yeah, I'm valuable because he uh, gives to me. I don't know. She added some big because to it. I can't remember off the top of my head. And I literally stopped her. I said, I want you to take that whole last part out and just say I'm worthy just because. Wow. So I'm just, I'm worthy. And she's like, oh, because she, her, she, her natural reaction was to attach something to it. Yeah. So this is just a good practice for you to do as you're just washing your dishes. Just take a deep breath and just go, 
<sighs> were they just because, you know, and smile mm. just because, just because I am no reason. I don't need to attach something there. And honestly, that's really how God sees you. But I, I know that you understand God sees you as that, but I always ask the question, but do you see you as that? Do you, do you believe that? Do you, are you seeing that? And, uh, cause we do have a relationship with ourselves. We just neglect it a ton, <laughs> which mm. is interesting. Yeah. So, uh, which your whole, whole thing is about, you know, happy and healthy and really actually not ne- try not to neglect yourself, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, take care of yourself. So anyway. exactly. And I think that's such a good point of like starting back with you, because I think that's where a lot of people get it wrong is they're like, maybe if I get into relationship, then I'll be seen as worthy or then I'll finally feel good about myself. And I try to tell girls, I'm like, no, like that exposes so much. And it's like, why not do the work now? Why not heal now? Why not become happy and healthy now for yourself? And I think that's where, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to talk about this within the Christian world because they're like, oh, you're becoming more selfish selfish and self-consumed and in vain and all these things. And that's never what I'm trying to promote. But I think to maintain and have healthy relationships, you have to like yourself. You have to know yourself. You have to work on yourself. And so I love that's what you're focusing on first. And so kind of on top of that, because I do have a lot of single girls and I know you coach a lot of them too. What are some of the best things that they can do right now in their singleness to prepare for a healthy relationship, to be a high value woman that a man sees and he's like, wow, like this woman is dope. And it's not that again, what you're saying, like they have to do anything, but what are things they can work on, you know, inside and out to prepare for that now? Oh my gosh. Wow. What a great question. So many things you do, but Honestly, I exactly what you just said, like learn to like yourself, like truly, actually, but I'll say I love the word value, like valuing you, caring for your heart. So being tender towards yourself is super important. So where can you be tender towards yourself? Um, you know, write out one thing I like to tell girls to do is to write out, like, how do you want to actually feel in your ideal relationship. Mm -hmm. And because I think sometimes we get focused on what we want a man to be, but rather I want you to actually get very in tune with how do you want to feel? Do you want to feel valuable, safe, loved, cared for, cherished, taken care of, protected? What are those deeper things that you want to feel? And then what I would have you do is I would have you try to give those feelings and create those feelings within your own heart first. So uh, if you want to feel valued, how are you valuing yourself? And, you know, I actually make this a practice. I, I love to give and like give financially and things like that. And I love it as a inner challenge, you know, to my own scarcity or different things. I love like doing that. But so what I've added to this, to my life is, how I, I challenge myself and I try to be intentional about also giving to myself, um, sort of like spending money for me. And I'm not talking about like going shop on a big shopping spree, although that could be a way that to do your thing, but like something a little more, uh, a little, a little more like taking myself to a spa or something when normally I'd say, oh, I need something else. I'm going to do something else. But no, actually, this is my way of giving to myself. And the more that you get comfortable giving to yourself, I believe you'll be better at receiving from a, from a man when he wants to give to you. You'll get become familiar with what it's like to feel relaxed because I'm sure you want to feel relaxed in your relationship. So look for ways that you can feel you can uh, feel into relaxation uh, already while you're single. Feel into peace, feel into safe, emotional safety. But a lot of that you can do and give within yourself. So sometimes it's just practicing slowing down. I have become a big fan of just going on YouTube and turning uh, meditative sounds on. So they're just mm-hmm. literally like a sound, like just just background sounds. And for five minutes, closing my eyes and trying to take deep breaths. And maybe I say a prayer in that too. But the whole point is, okay, I'm I'm just for five minutes, I'm going to do absolutely nothing. 
but breathe and not even think about something. And that just is helping me slow myself down. So um, learning to slow down because the idea is you want to prep yourself in the femme. You want to get as feminine now. And I'm not talking about like how you dress and everything, although you can do that too, but just like on the inside, this feminine energy state of being, you know, you want to really work on that. I mean, I think a lot of people know, you know, there's, there's so many things that people say, but I feel like getting very in touch with how you want to feel in your ideal relationship is, um, is almost more important because then you will be able to identify while you, when you do start dating, does this man make me feel safe emotionally? Mm -hmm. Does this man make me feel secure? Does he make me feel seen and valued? No, actually he doesn't right now. Okay, well then he might not be for me. That's good. So now my sifting becomes so much more clear and I'm not I'm not in my head spazzing out. I'm instead just observing and going to and then I'm making wise decisions on whether or not I'm going to continue participating in this. Another thing I do want to say Janine is this. Please everyone listening to me, please utilize online dating apps if you can if you can be brave enough and this is why because i think it is valuable it's got so much value in it for you and one of those is practicing you get to practice i have some girls in my class right now and they she's like i was resistant towards it i didn't want to do it but i was like okay i'm gonna do what rachel told me to do and she said you know I'm actually having so much fun with it. I'm learning so much. I'm learning so much about myself. And she said, I actually feel so free with it now. I'm not mm. feeling like all this grudgy, like, ugh, attitude. She's like, this is actually kind of fun and I'm learning. I'm growing. And so a lot of us want to just be very passive in our dating lives and we just kind of like sit back and don't do much. But, um, and maybe you are doing something, but I, I'm a big proponent of getting all out there and practicing if you can. That's a hot take. I, I feel like not a lot of people typically promote dating apps. I do know that that's something that you do like to encourage people to do. I've always been someone I'm like, nope, not doing it. I want to meet someone in real life. But I have seen it work for several, several people. Um, and I know you have some podcasts about rules with or thoughts on online dating because I feel like even if you do online dating, you still need to have a little bit of some guidelines, some thoughts. Don't just go on a date with literally anybody. I mean, I think there's definitely some safety things. Um, and oh, yeah. Checking their reputation, their character, their friends, all the things. But I do feel like, you know, God could still help you find somebody that way. And he does. I I have so much evidence. I, I have to say that. I mean, I see it constantly, especially as a dating coach, Christian godly women finding Christian godly men on Hinge and on Bumble. So okay. I need to say <laughs> that because I think there's a lot of stigma that, you know, they're not there. And I'm like, they definitely are there and girls <laughs> getting engaged and having very high quality relationships from the apps. So I just say it's a great practice tool, but remember it's the mindset behind it. You know, um, you just go in like, wow, you know what? I'm thankful for this opportunity to get to learn and grow and get to meet people, get to practice communication skills, get to learn these things. Um, but yes, I do agree. No, you know, filter things, you know, have some conversations. You guys can ask me about it. I have yeah. lots to say. I just, I do give the pep talk because I think, um, it's, it's, it's a, it's an amazing tool, especially in our modern world, um, that is, you know, that I see so much success from and lots of godly people on there more than you actually realize. So, well, I also feel like there's a lot of girls that are in cities that they're not finding good men or they're struggling to meet men or they maybe they have a very busy life or work life, or they just don't know where to meet people. Like I do think for people like that, like for me, I'm in a very social city. I'm in church. I have a lot of friends. We meet people. Everyone's meeting a lot of new people consistently. Yeah. But I think if you're, in a life stage where that's not happening, I do think that's a great idea. But I think yeah. my advice on dating apps would be proceed with caution and take a little bit longer to get to know the person because if yeah. they are a stranger, like anybody can be anybody. And you always say this, mm -hmm. like take your time, like give mm -hmm. it three to six months to really get to know them because true colors are revealed. So I wouldn't make any like 
rash decisions because you're like, we're in love. But like, mm. you know, dating apps are a little bit scary because you maybe don't know their friends. You can't be like, hey, what's their past? Like, tell me about them. Like, I think I'm happy that I got to meet Caleb in an organic way because I got to vet out his reputation beforehand. So yeah. I think oh, go yeah. for it, but proceed still with caution. That's take my advice. Take your time. Always take your time. When in doubt, take your time. And yeah, and, and definitely get to know, get to know their world. That's huge with any dating, whether it's online or not. Please, it it's better the sooner you can see their world and them see yours, the more and you see how they operate in your world, that's very good information that you do need to gather. So um I, I totally agree with you. Yes, wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Um, you know, don't do not, please don't be the girl who goes on the apps falls in love and gets married in three months. I have seen that happen. You don't know somebody in three months. It yeah. is a stranger. You do need the time. Take the adequate time to get to know someone. So I fully agree with you on that, Janine. Yes. I think that. I'm glad you emphasize that. Of course. So. Okay, two more questions. So one of them you actually kind of talked about a little bit, but I want to go a little bit more in depth into this. But you kind of talked about, you know, um, how do you feel with this person? And one of the girls said that she has a problem. She overlooks red flags a lot. She keeps picking fixer uppers instead of godly men. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of the times in your body, you can feel and you know, like, oh, this is so freaking wrong. Every woman's intuition is usually on point. So what would be your advice to women that are doing this? Like I've done this. I try not to do this anymore. Um, but a lot of girls are like, I'd rather be with him than be with nobody because at least I won't be alone. At least I'll have the appearance of having a man. We still get along, but homie's got some red flags waving high, like <laughs> bright red. So what are your tips to girls that keep doing this? That's so funny. Oh my gosh. The red flags. Uh, okay. They're everywhere. <laughs> the red flags. Okay, girls. No, no, no. Okay. Yes. So I am going to go back. You are correct. I'm going to go back to your body. Your body keeps the score. There is yeah. a book and a lot of people know about it and it's called the body keeps the score. It is a gnarly book. Okay. So you can read it if you want, but the title alone is like money to me. Yeah. I'm like, I love that title. I'm like, the body keeps the score, period. That's all you need to know. <laughs> done. So, uh, done. But um, the body keeps the score. So check in. Check in with your body. Check in and say how – okay, here's a huge thing I tell girls. Please ask yourself, how does, how does this man make me feel? How, no, ask this. How do I feel when I am with my man in person – and how do I feel with him when I am not with him? Mm. Those are very important questions you need to ask. So, uh, because here's the thing, when you're with him, how many times do we hear this? Everything's great. It's amazing. We're perfect. But when I'm not with him, I'm, I'm so worried. Like, what is he doing? He's not communicating with me. He's not letting me know where he is. I feel like I have to ask him. I feel like I have to do this. You know, I don't hear from him sometimes and this and that. You know, all these things will go down and, and a girl will feel so anxious when she's not with him. And I have to wonder, there's something off there. Mm. Because let me tell you something, a good man who really cares about you, wants to go the distance with you, really wants something substantial with you, he oftentimes will out the gates be looking for ways to make sure you feel safe and that you are uh, being communicated with. I use my husband as an example a lot, but he was very much like that. It was like, I didn't have to ask him. I didn't have to beg him for things. Yeah. There was like a couple times. So I'm da I'm totally okay with like a, a one-off, maybe a second conversation about communication. But if it's a repeated conversation sometimes, that means he's not really caring to rise up and communicate better with you if that's what if that's something you need okay so um but you know there's there's always room to have a a little converse a conversation about something but you want to see does he make a change from that point now i'm i'm kind of referring to communication here so every situation is so nuanced i need to say that um yeah. you know nothing's black and white what i am saying because each situation could be different and require different things but as a general rule of thumb 
you want to, you know, know, like I'm, I'm, if I have this conversation, like, Hey, I would love to hear from you more. It makes me feel really good when I hear from you during the week. And he goes, yeah, absolutely. And then he just does it. That's the man who's like, I want to make you feel good and safe and, and make this work. Um, but let me just go back. If he is making you feel all kinds of anxiety, a good man, a man who really wants to make things work and go the distance with you, it will try to think ahead. Why? Because he's the one thinking. Mm -hmm. He's the one going to solve the problems and fix things. He's going to think ahead already. I'm going to send her that text so she doesn't worry. Or I'm going to send her this so she doesn't. So, uh... Just consider that if you're, how are you feeling when you're with him and when you're not with him? So you want those to kind of be the same. Yeah. And oftentimes this is where the boring part can come in, you know, oh, it feels boring. Yeah. Because you're not feeling high and low and all over the place. Yeah. It's good. And it's because it's steady. It's because, yeah. you know, you feel calm and cool, collected when you're with him and you feel calm, cool and collected when you go home. So you don't have this like yo-yo situation going on. Um, and so that's a, that's just like a huge one that I could say off the top. There's a lot of a lot of things, but also remember I and I've meant, I said this in our in this podcast already too, but I always tell girls to always say this to yourself. I do not know him fully yet. Mm. I don't know him yet. Like I'm not I I am I am still getting to know him. So that remind that helps your inner inner state go. Okay, oof, I don't need to rush. I, I'm still observing. I'm still getting to know him. I still need to see some things. I still need to feel like we have a lot of transparency. Um, anyway, I I might be getting away from our. our well, I was gonna say, what if what if they what if they don't need to see more? They've seen enough, but the girl they keep staying. That's the oh. problem. She's seen some things and she knows this man isn't good for her, but she's like, I can fix him. I'm the one, the oh, outlier that'll no. make him change. That's okay. that's the girl I think that they're they're struggling with. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you've seen some stuff. Okay. <laughs> it's so funny. Me and Janine, we're like, we, we read Q&As and we're like, we have to really come up with what we feel like you're saying. I'm like, let me read between the lines here. Yeah. What, is, what might she be saying? So hopefully we're speaking, we're hitting home to some people here. But um, no, that girl, listen, no. For number one, rule number one, you cannot change someone. And number two, you don't want to be in a relationship where you feel like you have to constantly get him to change and get him to be and do yeah. and all of these things that will absolutely exhaust you. And you, this, this really comes back to honoring yourself, honoring your desires, ask what the deeper desire is, and then actually ask yourself truly, is he ready to be a husband? Is he ready for what we really, what I really want, what my soul long, what longs for? And if you've seen some red flags where you're like, probably not, but you catch yourself going, but he could, if he just changed this, if he yeah. just changed that, listen, you're not going to be the one to change him. I hate to break that to you, but it's, I know you want to, but he has to, every person has to want to change on their own. And sometimes that takes time. So the best thing for you to do is to, to value your time, value your desires. And actually I tell girls, you're your greatest caretaker. You need to be your greatest caretaker. And if you were, if you were to give yourself advice as an outsider looking in, what would you tell yourself? Mm. And oftentimes, you know, my husband calls me out on this all the time. He'll say to me, like, you know, I'll be going through something stressful and, you know, maybe a conflict I'm having with someone or something. <laughs> he just calls me out. I'll be like, what would you say to your girls? Like, what Ooh. would you say to, what would they, or what would you, would you talk like this to your friend? Would you say like this? And I'm like, actually, no, I wouldn't. Or, <laughs> you know, um, I'm like, you're kind of right. Or he would say, what would you say to them? And I'm like, man, I would totally tell them something else. You know, I would give them better advice than to my, so it's like, think of the best advice you would give your friend who's seeing these red flags and take that in for yourself. Why? Because you're a woman who values yourself. 
you're a high value woman. You're a woman who is elevating, who's rising, who is growing, who is not staying stagnant and who is willing to let go of things to open yourself up and become available for what your heart and soul really desire. And oftentimes that is just one choice away. It's one decision away. And you are the one, you're the only one who can make the decisions and choices for your own self as well. Mm. So uh, no one can make that for you. Me and Janine, Janine and I cannot make that for you. You know, we can't come to be in your ear and say, don't do this. You know, <laughs> yeah. you have to do it on your, you're it. You're up. Yep. Yep. You, you gotta get in the, you gotta do it. So that's good. That's good advice. I like, I really like that. That's really good. Um, okay. The last thing that some girls are wondering, and I love that you usually give people like key phrases of things to say, but someone asks like, how do I set proper boundaries? So that could be, Hey, no, you're not going to kiss me on the first date. Nope. I don't want, we're not sleeping together. Hey, I actually don't feel comfortable when you do this or Hey, that makes me feel really icky when you do that. Like what are ways that women can communicate their boundaries to be respected and honored? Okay. So with kissing, I'm just going to use the kissing thing because I feel like that one comes up a lot. I would literally say to a guy, um, you know, if if you – if he's – comes in and he's going to give you a kiss or there's something that you feel like is going to happen, you can always kind of stop that and say, hey, as much as I would love to kiss you right now, I do not kiss anyone until I'm in an exclusive relationship with them. Boom. So this is really important. I tell girls this a lot, especially if you like him. I mean, if you don't like him, you don't have to say as much as I'd like to kiss you right now. But I think this is an important thing, in my opinion, because you also want to validate this man. If you like him, of course, you're feeling him, whatever. Um, you know, you want to validate him by saying like, hey, and and of course, if that's true, like I would like to kiss this guy right now. That mm. would be nice, you know, as much as I would love to kiss you right now. And believe me, I do. I just, I for me, say for me, I don't kiss anyone until we get to the point of being in an exclusive relationship. And um, I know, you know, sometimes this dating time, this dating um, phase that we're in takes a little time to get there, but that's just my standard. Um, I'm curious to know your thoughts on that. You can ask him. I'm curious to know your thoughts because it's always polite to also ask that person, what are your thoughts? What what do you feel? You know, because he may have a different point of view, but you don't have to add that part. I like to just to add dialogue, but he'll yeah. usually go, oh, okay, that's fine. So, or until X, Y, Z, whatever your boundary is, you can use that with sex. You can use that with anything, but hey, like actually just to let you know, I don't do that. Here's another thing. Maybe you're just out to, out to eat and you guys have been on two or three dates and you guys haven't kissed yet, but you could say, hey, I'm curious to know, like, what are your thoughts on kissing? Like, how soon do you usually kiss someone? You can just open a curious conversation about that and get to know his thought, you know, and yeah. then and then he'll probably ask you your opinion, <clears throat> to which you get to say, um, for me, you know, I don't usually do that until I'm in an exclusive relationship. That's, you know, usually my standard. Here's the thing. Sometimes girls just fall right into kissing the guy and sure you can do that, but you don't have to, you don't have to do anything you're not ready for. You can, you actually are in so much more control. You as the woman and the feminine, you are the gatekeeper. Yeah. You get to gatekeep and say, yeah, you, you, I'll allow you in or I will not allow you in. Mm. Physically and non-physically, you know? And so I hold this gate. So um, you're in so much more power than you realize or you feel like. And and all you have to do is just express what feels good to you and what your standard is. And then you get to see how he respects that. Here's another great thing about the like, I'm not going to, I don't kiss guys until I'm exclusive. You, but I would like to kiss you. You're letting him know I'm attracted to you. I desire you. Really important for the man to kind of hear that. But, and, and you're also saying like, I'm not just like this prude who will never kiss, you know, I'm never going to do anything, you know, cause sometimes that can scare a guy away. Mm -hmm. So you just are saying, I would love that right now. And I I'm definitely feeling that, but I just want you to know, uh, for me, I don't kiss anyone until I am exclusive with them. And then that gives them a, um, a goalpost sort of, of like, when do, so, so, okay, click. 
So if I ever do want to kiss this person, there's, there's a requirement here. Yep. There's something, there's a commitment level I have to offer to get that. And so it kind of creates an inner challenge to him, but it's good because it's not like I'm shutting him out. It's a full on rejection. It's just, Hey, this is where I'm at. And it also gets you what you desire. So I always say all relationships are a big negotiation. Mm. It's, it's just coming to a negotiation table, but you get to say what, what your, what's good for you, what's not good for you. And so, um, that's just a real, really quick one off, off the top, but there's a lot of different scripts we could come up with depending on the boundary that you need to set. But mm. a great thing to do is to always try to get into your man's psyche by asking a curious question. So if you want to set a boundary about something, why don't you ask him what his thoughts are on that thing first? Just get to know him. Get to know where his head's at, where his mind's at. Because guess what? He's not going to think the same as you. Period. Mm, Ever. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. So he's going to have a different thought, different timelines, different things. And here's the key, ladies. Please honor that. Respect that he's an individual who has some different thoughts, who might have a different, different just flow of getting to something. But it's so wonderful for you to value and validate what he thinks, get to know what he thinks without judging him. And then you share yours and then Hopefully the goal is that you guys meet in the middle somewhere. Yeah. That there's a middle ground that there is like, okay, we respect, we honor. And if there's a hard line you have to hold, you hold in the hard line. And if he stays, he stays. Yay. If he goes, he goes. Also yay. Because right. you don't you want to be with him either way. So to me, your boundary is always going to be a win-win situation. Always. That's so good. Yeah, I was just about to say that. I think it's an incredible indicator of whether this man will respect you, will honor you, will not push your boundaries. Because if he's like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I'm not doing that. Then it's like, all right, you know, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Like, yeah. bye bye. Because it's like, I will, you can go find another man that will respect that boundary. But I think it's, yeah, it's a very good indicator whether he will honor that and will do the hard work and will be willing to lay his life down to be self controlled, to be patient for whatever the boundary is. I really think it's a good tool. And it's not that, again, you're trying to play a game, but it's like, no, I'm doing this for me. And I love that you say for me. It's not like, my best friend made this standard, so I'm going to make this standard. It's like, no, 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 this is my standard. And I really do think it makes a man respect you, but also you respect him too if he honors that boundary. And so thank you for saying that. And um, these are great points. You are a woman of wisdom. Thank you so much, Rachel, for sharing all your tips. Um, and I, I really do encourage girls and even guys too. I think it's cool for guys to get into girls' heads of what they're yeah. processing and how they're, you know, overanalyzing and freaking out um, to follow you as well. So just let everybody know where they can find you and anything else that you may want to plug. Um, yeah, just the true feminine on, I guess, everything. Yeah. <laughs> podcast, uh, podcast, just my podcasts are more long form, obviously. Um, so I get, go a little more in depth there. You know, I always give advice on my posts on Instagram, TikTok, and uh, I'm kind of dabbling in YouTube. So if you're, you know, wanting to listen to more, there's stuff over there. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's it. I run a um, six week, very intensive. Um, it's called the True Fem True Feminine Academy. It's my baby. I mean, we go we go to the nth degree inside there. We're talking <laughs> the inner healing, the scripts, the words, the all all the things. So. That's my big program, and actually, I'll be launching that soon. That'll it, it opens up and it closes, so it's a closed group. Really powerful stuff. Really amazing results come from that. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. I pop up and do little trainings and master classes. I have a training that's going to come up in like uh, two weeks, I think. And um, so, if you just follow my page and you follow my stuff. Um, and you want to come into my world and get coaching from me, there are options for that. Uh, you can find really on any one of my platforms. And again, it's just the true feminine. So I don't know. Yay. Come find me. <laughs> well, thank you, Rachel. You're so amazing and inspiring. Oh. And I love how you're helping women just find freedom in dating. And um, thank you for coming on and spending an hour with me. It's always like such a joy just chatting with you and getting thoughts, your thoughts on dating and stuff. So thank you for making an impact on women and oh. keep crushing it, girl. I'm, I'm so in your corner. 
Oh, I love you, Janine. It's so good to see you. Janine's also amazing. I know all your girls like adore you. So <laughs> you're so I'm cute. Honored. Like it's because some of your girls would come over to me and I just love like how much they love you. But I love you too, Janine. Janine's Aww. amazing. Thank you also for having me on the show. And it's been fun. I know a whole year or so. So yeah. um, but we'll definitely have some catch up time later but yes maybe move, move to san diego come out we'll girl. see <laughs> well enjoy disneyland and tell kate and jj i say hi <laughs> i will okay Love okay you, girl. bye rach thanks for coming bye. on And now a voice memo from a listener. So if you guys don't know, you are able to submit voice memos. We love to feature these. We love to hear what you guys have to say. So you can always submit these in the YouTube description or look in the show notes. I absolutely always love hearing your guys' feedback. So please send these and I'm excited to feature this one today. So let's get into it. Hi, Janine. Um, I just wanted to say I just listened to your podcast which was great by the way it was the one with Caleb after you guys got back from Israel and it was really funny just I think maybe even more so funny because you guys were like jet lagged or whatever and I feel like it like kind of let a little bit of your like walls down and like just maybe you guys being with each other like made it even more like interesting and like just some of your like comments and jokes and that um I really loved like seeing that side of you guys so yeah that was great um also I appreciate you guys um being so open and everything and um I want to say I love and support the long podcast so you can totally do like an hour and a half or like two hour podcast and I would still listen to it so yeah um thank you <laughs> Thank you so much to this happy and healthy listener for submitting this voice memo. These words genuinely mean so much to me and I'm always looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say, any feedback and thoughts or questions. So always feel free to leave more down below and thank you so much to this happy and healthy listener. I really, really appreciate your words and thank you for listening to the podcast. Thank you guys for hanging out with me on today's episode of Happy and Healthy. I really hope that this episode was a blessing. I genuinely feel like this episode even helped me, but I hope that this just gave you guys some solutions, some answers, some things to challenge yourself in. If you guys want to DM Rachel or check out any of her stuff, it's just the true feminine. She's on all social media by that name. Let me know your thoughts, like comment down below or repost it or DM me or whatever, DM her. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. Um, on this topic and I will plan on doing more dating episodes soon because you guys love to talk about this and so do I So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of happy and healthy feel free to leave us a review if this was a blessing send us voice memos um, We also still are accepting monthly patreons to help pay for this podcast. It's expensive running a podcast So feel free to ever pay or donate monthly, but just know it is never required. It's always free I'm here to bless you guys um, but if you do donate, thank you so much. And thank you to our monthly supporters. It means the world to me. But I will see you guys again next Tuesday for another episode of Happy and Healthy. Until then, stay happy and healthy. Bye, guys.